I come to my second case studies. This is the case of Farakka village. You know, here is the Farakka village was constructed to resuscitate the navigational status of the Kolkata port. Kolkata port was, is, a, is a obviously our colonial legacy. We had an expectation that this port will function uh, as usual, even after the revolution of the shipbuilding technology, when we started to build large ships. It is an inland port. So we constructed a barrage on, at Farakta and induced for, start, started to induce 40,000 cubesecs of water into, into this river. Problem is that Ganga at Farakka carries 800 billion tons of sediment load annually. When the flowing room water was intercepted, the river started to deposit the sediment load and the cross-sectional area reduced and river started to change the course. I will show you with some maps the, how the river changed its course. This is the estuary of the, of, of the river, 500 kilometers downstream of the, of, the, of the Farakka village. We had an expectation that the 40,000 cubesecs of water will flush the sediment load and keep the channel free for navigation. But what happened to the river? You look at the two maps. One is map of the Survey of India 1922 and other is the satellite image of 2010 how the river has changed its course upstream of the Farakka barrage. And no less than 64 mojas have been wiped out from, from Malda districts. And there is a conflict over the position of these chore lands. And about half a million people were displaced. They are virtually suffering from an identity crisis they are on. So no one took into account the sediment load carried by the river is if it river is intercepted, it will deposit the sediment load. So what I believe that they had a pious intention to improve the navigational status, but they failed to foresee the impact of depositing the sediment load when a river, when you, uh, they started to impound 87 million cubic meter of water, the sediment load started to drop into the river. Result is this. And when the river started to shift, it swallowed the very fertile agricultural land. And the engineers started to tame the river with a band protection, with boulders. But in all cases, it failed. And they have incurred more, more than 300 crores of rupees uh, in, in two districts in, the, in about 170 kilometer stretch. But what I emphasize here half a million people who were displaced. The issue of rehabilitating these people was never take it, taken into account. Second thing is that I was trying to overlay seven sets of map. Since 1767 to 2010, you will find how a delta river behaves. It has a tendency to oscillate. And there is a meander belt within which river oscillate. And this area should be identified as the space for river. You will also find some nodal points where river has not oscillated at all. So this dynamics of river system must be understood for the, uh, by the river managers. This is most important. This is the teaching of, uh, of from the historical study of the historical maps. I have overlaid seven sets of map uh, to produce this map. And my atlas also contains this, this map also, how a river system behaves in, a, in the delta. There is some problem here. Can you help me please? It is irrigation. Since the post-independence period, you all know, uh, we started to construct some large dams. One is DVC reservoirs. We had the expectation that water will be stored in Jharkhand and that will reach in the downstream section. Water, the transmission distribution loss was not taken into account. This increasingly made the farmers dependent on groundwater table. Result is that this is supposed to be the DVC command area, but this is the area where the groundwater table is most intensely exploited nowadays, and groundwater table has gone down. down. 
more than six lakhs of shallow tube wells are operating there on. Result is depletion of the groundwater not only, but also officially 81 blocks out of 342 blocks in West Bengal groundwater is contaminated with arsenic and 49 blocks they have declared contaminated with fluoride. And my friends working uh, in agricultural science, they say that contamination has entered in the food chain. This is a serious threat for, uh, for the people of West Bengal living there. Here are two maps. One western side is arsenic contaminated blocks and in eastern side you will find the fluoride contaminated blocks. Officially 81 blocks are contaminated with arsenic, 49 blocks are contaminated with fluoride. This is the last part. We have other problems in southern part of the delta. You know since late 18th century we started to reclaim the forest from Sundarbon area. And about f 5 million people are living there on. Result, and there also we embanked the river. We did not allow to spill the, the creeks. And the mangrove was extensively deforested. Result is that you will find that I was preparing a map of the 20th century since 1917 to 2010. You will find that the western part sea is encroaching gradually. There are many factors resulting in this. One is subsidence of the, of, the, of the land. Second is when you have depleted or you have deforested the area, the wave attack has increased, resulting more and more erosion. And many channels have, have been decayed. So there are, uh, uh, this is sometimes also linked with the global warming and thermal expansion of water. All together, starting from north to south Bengal, uh, we have a crisis relating to our river system. So what was earlier said to be the land of rivers is now a land of dead rivers. With these few words, I conclude my lecture. Thank you all for your patient hearing.